Your decision to leave the Titans appeared to have come very suddenly. What was the process for you? Was there a lot more going on that we didn't know? For me, it was just that I was up there. I was up there by myself. It's, it's hard being anywhere by yourself. And I, I grew up in, in a, with a strong sense of our family. Um, you, my mother was everything to me, and my father was too, and my brother as well. So at the end of the day, I just snapped. You know, for me, I, I had to get back down to Sydney and be around family. How do you respond when they call you disloyal? You know, at the end of the day, they've got to think about their family. Who are they more loyal to, their job or their family? That's an easy decision for me every day. Jamal was desperate to be back with his family and all it took was one simple text message from his mother Alana for him to realise that he had to come home. What was that text message that brought Jamal home? She sent me a message, um, one going, oh, I'm, I'm sitting here uh, thinking of you. I know you just reminded me of uh, Delta Dawn. I used to sit there and um, I used to sing to her in the car. Delta Dawn, what's that flower you have on? Could it be a faded rose from days gone by? And did I hear you say he was meeting you here today to take you to his mansion in the sky? And then mum's part was always, she's 41 and her daddy still calls her baby. That's what I said to you. I said, yeah, you, I said, you'll be 41 and you'll be still, I'll, I'll be still calling you baby. And this is my and why did that affect you so deeply? Back then everything was so easy, you know, mum was right there and like, we grew up, it was always me and her doing everything together. It, it wasn't as if like, she's my mother, I'm her child, it was more as if we just were best friends, we did everything together. So it was a little hard knowing that you just can't see her when you want. And we, I don't know, it just sort of got me flaccid for a bit and yeah. <laughs> Jamal quickly became a cold figure in the game. His talent on the field was only matched by his infectious personality offered, becoming one of our most loved players. Panthers coach Ivan Cleary says Jamal is exactly what Penrith needs and Jamal's confident he can deliver. That felt good. That felt good. That felt real good. See, that's how I did it. Like, I got here and I was just like... Your form, do you think he can get back yeah, better than ever? Definitely, but that, that's just me, you know. Every every game I go out to play, I go out to play my best. You know, I always, I don't know if I, you can say it seems arrogant or not, but I run out on the field and I say to myself, I'm the best centre on this field, no matter what, every single time. I look at my other centre, I smile because I sit there and I go, oh, you know, I'm going to run straight at you the first touch I get. If you think Jamal's tough, he had to be from an early age. Growing up in and around an Aboriginal mission in Foster, his childhood quickly became about survival. His family were pushed to the brink of poverty, at times leaving them with nothing. When I was younger, I was at a stage in my life where, you know, um, I would just be sleeping at a beach because I had nowhere to sleep. You know, I, I had nothing. You know, nothing was handed to me. But yet I'd go up to the mission and every door on the mission was open. You're hungry, you could walk into your mum's cousin's house and she would cook you something to eat, you know. Um, the, they were just giving me everything, you know, when it was like the world was just taking everything, you know, so, yeah. Is there a, a point in your adolescence where, given different choices, you could have been on a very different path by now? There was a lot of crime with us, you know, children growing up, you know, we, we would have JJ classes, like juvenile justice classes we would go to and everything, and, you know, I sort of got to a point where one of my teachers said to me, you know, get out of Foster the first opportunity you can because there's nothing here for you. The way things are going, you're either going to be in jail or it's going to end even worse for you. Could you have ended up in jail? 100%. To be honest with you, that's where I thought I was going. That, that, that's just the normal. That's, our, our mentality at the time, when we were about 13, 14, 15, was, yeah, we're going to be locked up soon enough, so whatever. Did you ever worry about Jamal growing up? Was there ever a point where you thought, I might lose him here? Oh. That's a tough question. Um, sort of, yeah. it got to a point where, you know, uh, there, there was a few deaths happening, you know, at one stage, and it was all like around the mission yeah. and stuff. And then, you know, one of my cousins got murdered as well by my other cousin. And then things just started taking off from there and it just started escalating and getting worse and worse. I guess that's when things, mum started worrying a fair bit. 
Homeless and living out of a car, Jamal would spend nights walking the streets drinking alcohol. Until at the age of 12, St Vinny stepped in and gave he and his mum a home for six months, changing their lives forever. What changed for you at that time? Um, for me, what actually changed, I guess, was the fact that I wasn't in school. I was drinking a lot, you know, for a child. Um, but that's all you could really do to keep your mind off things. But um, that gave me a bit of stability. You know, you know, roof over my head means you can, uh, you got that stability to go back to school. You got that st stability to get back into sport, you know what I mean? Because you know when you finish training, you got somewhere to go. Did that force you to grow up pretty quickly? Um, I think we'll not have any house. No, not having a place, that forced me to go up. Yeah, definitely. There are certain stages in your life where, that you will go through where there's no one there that can help you. You're there because of your own choices, so you just got to choose wisely. Do you find that those experiences have made you the man you are now? You said they made me tougher. They, they, they have, uh, they, they've turned me into everything I am. And it brought you together as a family, exactly, closer? Exactly. You know, we didn't have much, but we had love. Yeah, well, we've always been close from point blank, but it has, yeah. Mum used to say, you know, it's us against the world. That's it. Sports saved Jamal's life. At 16, his mum packed up Jamal and his younger brother. A move to Sydney brought him back to reconnect with one of the most important men in his life, his dad, Jerry. It was there on a scruffy athletics track that this father and son bond became unbreakable. Jerry and Jamal also became coach and athlete. The, the ground behind you has such significance. What's it like being back here together? <sighs> Brings back a lot of memory. Some very, very good memories. Jerry became a rock in Jamal's life, not just through sport, but also spiritually exposing Jamal to values outside of his Indigenous heritage. Growing up in Australia, another thing is my dad's Muslim, you know, and that's all I knew growing up. He said to me one day, we were sitting in the car, and he goes to me, um, he goes, I'll never force you to be a Muslim. And he goes, I'm Muslim because it makes me a better person. And he goes, you know, that's the only reason I am. He goes, you're in Australia, you grew up differently, it's, it's up to you. If someone was to come up to me and say, what are you? I'd say, oh, I don't have religion. But if they were to say, well, you got to pick one. I'm Muslim. I was born a Muslim. And at the end of the day, I guess when I die, I'm still going to be a Muslim. Born to an African father and an Aboriginal mother, Jamal's identity is unique. But being different also made the family a target. It is hard being an African in rugby league because at the time that we came here, I, when I go around the field, I was the first African you see around with my kid playing rugby league. All the African friends were playing soccer. Some people even look at you, what are you doing there? This is not your game, this is our game. What sort of things did you hear? In the semi-finals for SG Ball even, I was, oh. I was playing against Roosters. Roosters, yeah. And there was, this, uh, there was this kid on the other side and it was maybe about five minutes from the end of the game and he started saying, go back to Africa, back to you Africa. black, you black F and C. That was in you, yeah. yeah, you're, you're a dirty African, you're this, that and the rest. People are behind the fence, fans are behind the fence and they think that they can say it because they're on the other side of the fence. They wouldn't say it to me on the street. So what, thinks, what makes them think they can say it because they're on the other side of the fence? Don't get, it, don't get me wrong. It's not calling him the African, that is not a problem, it's a problem. Of course he is, but it's what they said before and after it. It's really hard, but in the end, I had to do it for him, so I kept him in there. So for better or for worse, I'm glad the way he turned out these days, you know, so in the end, he have the last laugh. Jerry, you must be very proud. Ah, proud is not the word. Um, I think I'm blessed. Idris, and Idris is there! Idris snaps it up out of mid -air. Jamal, that is a great try. Yours is one of the most recognisable faces in the game. Why is that? Why are we so attracted to Jamal Idris? Because I'm good looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think what what people want to see. I'm, I'm more like people outside of football. You know, I'm not the typical football player. You know, I'm just like that normal guy down at the pub. You know, and I look like a pub bloke. You know, he just came out of the pub to play footy. So uh, I think I can relate to a lot of people. 
you're a big kid and you've, you've always been a big kid. Is yeah. the weight, do you ever think about it? Do you think, oh, okay, Jamal, the pants are getting you a bit tight? There's a lot, of, a lot of larger kids who get teased in the playground, you know, but at the end of the day, I used to get teased when I was a kid, you know, short and rounded. I used to get teased as well, braces and pigeon toed. But look, at the end of the day, I'm playing at the top level NRL. I'm doing it. That just goes to show every other kid getting teased on, on the playground because they're, cause they're large, they can do it as well. Jamal's at home at the Panthers. He's happy and content. Outside of footy, he's continuing his community work and helping other young boys who struggle to fit in. OK, my favourite car would probably have to be a Lamborghini. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> do you see a little bit of yourself when you go and talk to these boys? Yeah, yeah, I do. You know, they're, uh, their eyes are just open, they're all energetic and they, and they just want to play. They just want to be happy. Uh, nothing in life matters except being happy. And having fast cars. And having fast cars, yeah, <laughs> having fast cars. Mum, what do you want to do next? Footy, um, footy, yes, footy, footy, yes, footy, yes, footy, footy, yes, footy, yes, footy, please. We could go out and keep please. the ball around if he's wanted. Yeah. <laughs> How has NRL changed your life? Well, it's, it's, as, it's as simple as, yeah, you know, my mother never goes hungry, my father never goes hungry. You know, my whole family's always looked after me, no matter what it is. At the moment, I'm living a good life. I never thought I'd live ever. You know, the, the, like I said before, you know, the, the fact that you know, I always thought I was just going to be in jail, it's as simple as that, you know, it's, it's a big turnaround. Jamal will always remember the generous act that had such a profound impact in his life. Out of his own pocket, Jamal donates through St Vinnie's to families in need because he says all you have to do is change one child's life. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. I guess, you know, like everyone knows how I feel about, you know, uh, the children. They are, they, they are future. It's as simple as that. You know, um, and you, know, you help the parents out, that helps the children out. So anything I can do to help someone's life, you know, that's what you play in our role for, to change people's lives.